guys, I just want to go over several dwarf planets, which people claim are Planet X or Nabooru or some kind of bringer of destruction. Let's try and defeat this bullshit fear. The dwarf planet Make Make, officially known as 1364-72 Make Make, was discovered on 31st of March 2005 and was announced as a dwarf planet on the 11th of June 2008. It's a trans-Neptunian object because it orbits the Sun after Neptune. It's called Make Make after the god of the ancient civilization that lived on Easter Island. It was nicknamed the Easter Bunny as it was discovered around Easter time. The International Astronomical Union said it wasn't a good name, so it was given the name Make Make. It's a rocky, icy planet, very far out, very cold, which poses no threat of any kind to the Earth or the inner solar system. It's so far out, it takes 308 years to complete a single orbit of the Sun. Its orbit is fairly elliptical, which varies between 45.791 astronomical units and 53.74 astronomical units. Some fearmongers, as soon as a planet is discovered, or a dwarf planet, they try and say that that is proof for their paranoid, fearful theories. Obviously, they're mistaken. Ceres is the smallest dwarf planet in the solar system, and it's the only dwarf planet in the main asteroid belt. It was discovered on January the 1st, 1801. It's named after an ancient Roman goddess. The goddess Ceres was responsible for growing of plants, the harvest and motherly love. In 2006, the International Astronomical Union decided to upgrade Ceres from an asteroid to a dwarf planet with a diameter of about 950 kilometers. Ceres is by far the largest and most massive object in the asteroid belt. Without any cause or consequence, there is no reason to assume or believe that Ceres poses any threat to the Earth. I have read what some conspiracy theorists have said on this object. They have suggested it is a moon of Nibiru, or it's the remains of a planet which once was destroyed by Nibiru. No evidence or proof has ever been brought forward. Ceres is not a Nibiru-like object or a danger to the Earth. The dwarf planet Eris is a trans-Neptunian object, bigger than Pluto. It's the largest dwarf planet known. At 2400 kilometers in diameter, Eris orbits the Sun once every 557 years and it has an elliptical egg-shaped orbit tilted at an angle of 44 degrees. It has a moon called Dysnomia. It was discovered on the 5th of January 2005. It was originally called Xena after the main character of the television series 
Xena Warrior Princess. It was officially named Eris on September 13th, 2006. The name itself, Eris, is the Greek goddess of strife, discord, and rivalry. Under the specifications of what constitutes a planet, Eris, along with Pluto and the other dwarf planets, are recognised as being just that, dwarf planets. They are not recognised as being full planets, like with the larger bodies within the solar system. There has been a lot of fear-mongering about the possibility of Eris coming into the centre of the solar system, or by some quirk affecting the Earth. There is no proof of any kind that this will happen. It is merely wild speculation on the part of conspiracy theorists. And it serves no good purpose. It is completely unproven. And the facts, the genuine, solid facts, are easily attainable. The Moon of Eris Dysnomia was discovered in 2005. Its name is derived from the ancient Greek, meaning lawlessness. The name also means the daughter of the Greek goddess Eris. So giving it that name is quite fitting. The reason why I mention this particular moon is because people have claimed that this is in fact a UFO. Dysnomia is, according to some people, a UFO, because it's not causing the wobble effect they would expect. And I haven't confirmed this information with, like, any of the actual scientific institutions. They haven't talked to NASA or any of the great universities studying this particular object. They just simply said, it must be a UFO when clearly there is no evidence of that whatsoever. Perhaps the strangest dwarf planet out there is Holmia. It only has one third of the mass of Pluto, but is shaped so strangely it makes it unique as far as we know within the solar system. Its unusual shape is believed to be the result of a large impact in its distant past. It has two very small moons, Hayeka and Namaka. It's believed that these moons were originally part of the same planet, but due to the impact, it broke apart the planet as it was making it as it is, a small, strangely shaped object with two very small moons. Some conspiracy theorists have already suggested that this planet is in fact the home world of the reptilians, or, as some other conspiracy theorists have suggested, it's a giant UFO. Or it's Nibiru, or Planet X. I just want to say that is the most retarded collection of pointless speculation I have ever heard. Anyone who thinks that without any proof or evidence is simply playing into fantasy. Nine o four eight two, Orcos is a trans-Neptunian object, considered by many to be a dwarf planet, although not formally designated as such. In some ways it's reminiscent of Pluto, with such a large moon to such a small planet. The size of Orsus is 800 to 900 kilometers in diameter. 
while Vanth is thought to be 280 to 380 kilometers. The reason why I've talked about this object is because there is some small chatter on the internet trying to say that Orsus is in fact Nibiru without any proof of any kind. Once again, they say, well, this is what NASA is calling Nibiru. It's really pathetic. The dwarf planet Sedna was discovered in 2003. And like many other dwarf planets, Nibiru theorists have claimed it's Nibiru or Planet X or one of the moons of Nibiru. Now I could state a whole load of facts about it. I could state how many things are associated with it. It's elongated orbit, hugely elliptical, which takes over 11,000 years to complete. Or the fact that there are thousands of smaller objects than this out there in the solar system, which are in some cases far more likely to hit us than any of these dwarf planets. But you know what? All I need to say is there is no proof or evidence of any kind that this object or indeed any others, whether we talk about asteroids, whether we talk about dwarf planets, or whatever, are going to come and hit us. There is no reason to believe a major event involving a planet, or planetoid, or a moon, or even a very large asteroid, will take place within the modern era. There's no reason to assume it's going to happen for generations, probably a lot more. And there's no reason to assume that 2012, or thereabouts, will have a major event. There is no factual evidence showing this to be an actuality. To my knowledge, and the research I have done, looking over the work of others and making a rational appraisal of the situation. It is simply idle speculation to believe that a planetoid, a dwarf planet on the edge of the solar system, could cause devastating effects on the Earth. There is no reason to assume this is going to happen. There is no reason to believe that devastation is going to take place in 2012 or 2013 or 2014. If anything, these discoveries of these many dwarf planets simply show we have so much more to learn from the wonders of the solar system.